If you were to live anywhere, ghouls and gals, any universe other than our own, I doubt you'd want to live in any of the Warhammer settings. Danger lurks around every corner, and as well as having to face the regular human problems of ageing, disease, and paying ludicrous prices for coffee, there's also a high chance an angry orc or chaos warrior is just going to rampage through your town, destroying your home, wiping out your family, and kicking dirt in your face. Not a great time, really. However, I'm sure you as well as I can't help but wonder what life is like for a normal guy in Warhammer. It's worth noting I'm not talking about Warhammer 40k, mind you. Other, better YouTubers have covered how you're most likely just going to end up living a life of squalor if you're not blown up, ravaged by demons from chaos, or turned into tyrannid paste. The life of a normal human in the grimdark far future is just that. Grim and dark. But what about in Warhammer Fantasy, where there is at least a little glimmer of hope at the end of every catastrophic event? Surely, the life of a normal guy could be fairly decent there. Well, let's see, as we dive into what life could be like as a regular bloke. First, let's set the stage for our protagonist. As he's just a man of the town, a regular bloke, he needs a fitting name. I've gone with Barry. There, first major task done. Now, we've got to move on to where he lives. There are plenty of places a human can dwell in Warhammer Fantasy. Cathay probably wouldn't be too bad, Bretonia would suck if you're a peasant, and the Chaos Wastes don't really have any recommendable features. And so, we're back to sticking Barry in the Empire. It gives him a solid foundation in which to build his life. Even so, it's worth saying that the Empire is not really one unified whole in Warhammer. It will fight as one when the need calls, but the provinces that make up the Empire are very diverse. These were once barbarian tribes, each with their own customs, ways of life, and even dialects. And a lot of people within the Empire would still see themselves as middenlanders rather than a citizen of the Empire, for example. From the gods they worship to the foods they eat, there are a lot of different people in the Empire, and there are also a lot of different threats that can come in depending on where you are. If you live up north in Nordland or Ostland, chaos ships can sail right over. Live down in Solund and orcs are on their way to your house first. Avaland and Stirland have some particularly bony neighbours, you get the idea. Even in the centre of the Empire, provinces like Middenland are dealing with constant beastman and goblin threats. It's not a peaceful place, but to give Barry the fairest chance at a decent life, I've decided to place him down in Talabekland. Located in pretty much the centre of the Empire, nestled in by Reichland, Stirland, Hockland and Ostland, it isn't often attacked by foreign invaders, as it usually has one of its buffer provinces take the brunt. Still, that doesn't mean it's overly safe, as Barry could still end up being stabbed by one of the rats that definitely don't exist down in the sewers while he's reading the newspaper on the bog. And he can also run afoul of the random orc and beastman raids that just pop up everywhere in the Empire. But in Talabekland, we have a bit more freedom to give Barry an interesting life, make it seem a bit less dire to just live anywhere in the Empire. This isn't to say that you couldn't be safe in Nordland or Ostland, but you'd probably have to endure a few attacks and get quite lucky, Luckier than the people in the Reichland, or Talabekland, that is. Even if we pop Barry down here, old Baz could still end up with a multitude of different lives. Thanks to the River Talabek, there is a good amount of money flowing into Baz's province. He could make a pretty penny as a trader, or perhaps a hunter. Maybe even he's a priest of Tal, the god of hunting. I don't think of Barry as a very religious man, though. I don't want to put him as a state trooper, either, as even though a lot of normal dudes will have a pike or a sword thrust into their hands, and will have to fight orcs, beastmen, chaos, and anything else the Emperor deems unworthy, we all know that about Warhammer already. I think even if Barry was to be thrown into a conflict, it would be a desperate situation. State troopers are trained by the Empire. It's not a Warhammer 40k scenario where anyone just gets given a las gun. The state troopers are farmers, blacksmiths, farriers, yes, but they have to face down foes bigger and stronger than them with similar weapons, meaning they need to be drilled constantly to even have a chance. Okay, so we're not making Barry a trooper, or a priest, so let's go with the merchant option. It allows us to have him move around a lot, whether that be by the rivers or the roads. Even the Great Empire roads aren't as safe as the rivers, but these watery routes are taxed more heavily, meaning Barry will probably risk a bit of both on the road. To keep a fitting theme with Talabekland, let's have him sell pelts and furs. He's probably going to smell a bit, but that's our Barry. As he's not a member of the Imperial College, or trying to be a wizard, chances are, even if he's quite well-travelled, he's going to be rather ignorant and fearful. In the Empire, towns and cities might be more open-minded, but in the villages, superstition remains supreme. Anyone expected of being involved in heresy could well find themselves dangling from a rope, and often peasants have rituals they use to ward against evil. Whether these work is unknown, as it is a magical setting, after all. Barry isn't going to be completely tinfoil hat-pilled, but with the Empire propaganda being so strong, he certainly doesn't believe in any rat folk, nor does he ever question whether Chaos is actually going to win at some point. 
Talibek landers are loyal to the Empire in Warhammer Fantasy. They might have started a couple of civil wars and might not be the best friends of Sterlanders depending on your history, but otherwise Barry is going to get on with neighbouring province citizens, even if he doesn't quite understand them. We've spent a lot of time on who this geezer is, as I think it's important to highlight the diversity of human and empire society in Warhammer Fantasy. You won't just be living as a trooper forced to defend the realm, nor will you be getting to live the life of a peaceful farmer, a mad druid or anything in between. There's a genetic lottery in a way, sort of like in real life. You may be born to nobility or riches, or you could just be born days before a chaos raid sweeps through your town, and you're either bashed into a wall for the fun of it, or kidnapped to become a chaos worshipper. I could have picked 10, 20 different origins for Barry, giving him a wholly different life, but with the one we have now, let's delve into what he actually does in a given day. As he's not got chaos, vampires or orcs at his border, Barry is free to live a life similar to that of a merchant in the Holy Roman Empire. That is what Games Workshop based the Empire on, after all. He begins his morning with a quick breakfast of oats, cheese, bread and whatever else he can get his hands on. He's no peasant and he's got a bit of coin to his name, so he can afford to eat more than a bit of slop each day. Barry then heads out of his house, located in Beck, a peaceful merchant town in the north of Talabak, and heads towards the nearby woods. He says a quick prayer to Tal as he enters the woods, fingering the carved symbol of the nature god around his neck. It's a lucky day for Baz as he brings down a boar. Yippee! After his hunt, he brings the animal back home, giving its meat to his wife for dinner and readying its furs to be sold. As sun sets, he sits down for dinner with his family before heading to bed. The next day, Barry sells the bill fur in Beck and then gets on his carriage with a load of bear and wolf pelts to head to Midland. It's not a long journey, one he's taken many times before, and usually he'd pay for a guard or two along the road, but times are tough. He's got another little one on the way, and so he decides to risk it alone. A poor choice. It's not chaos, not orcs, or skaven that shove a knife at Barry on his way to Middenheim. It's just a regular human bandit. A worshipper of Sigmar, just as Barry is. If this were Warhammer 40,000, this is where Barry would meet his end. His family wouldn't have the means to support themselves, and the whole town of Beck would soon be blown up for heresy or something. But as this is Warhammer Fantasy, we've got a bit more hope. Barry loses his furs, but manages to make an escape. He's not an idiot, and has brought a weapon to defend himself with, and can make the rest of the journey to Middenheim without falling victim to any bandit, goblin, or beastie that might want to gobble him up. With the rest of his money, he buys his way home, where he now decides it'll be easier taking a boat if he ever needs to travel again. I think these couple of days show what life is like for a normal guy in Warhammer Fantasy. You can be as far away from violence as possible, besides maybe living in the heart of Ulthuan, but you'll still risk falling victim to it. Disease is also a big problem, as even though doctors and healers have access to literal magic and more knowledge than we did in a similar time period, there is also a magical god brewing toxic plagues that purposefully circumvent medicines. Life isn't easy, but it's a lot less bleak than Warhammer 40,000. You can still be happy so long as you take pleasure in the small things and look out on where you were born. Humans born in Britonia have it pretty rough, as do the Kislevites, so if I'm picking anywhere to live, it's probably the Empire. Even if I end up in Sylvania, I'd rather take my chances with a vampiric overlord and bad weather over having some Grail Knight rock up for Prima Nocta on my wedding day. In any case, largely people in Warhammer Fantasy will know the dark things exist in their world, I would say percentage-wise, more people know about orcs, demons, and beastmen in fantasy than the people of the Imperium know about the potential threat of Xenos in 40k. It's better to keep that population docile, while in fantasy, humanity needs to be aware of what it's facing so it doesn't freeze in fear when it has to charge in and face a gaggle of trolls. They'll know of elves, ogres, halflings, and dwarves too, because while they're rare, these other species do settle in the Empire at times, or are considered their allies. The average secluded village dweller might remain suspicious of anyone they don't know, but all in all, society in Warhammer Fantasy isn't as grim as you might think. Especially in the Empire, your life quality will feel a lot less like a dice roll and more akin to the experience shared by most people living in the same areas as you. Province to province, you'll get hardier people and different beliefs, but otherwise the life of a normal guy in Warhammer Fantasy is pretty... normal, I guess. No magic, no adventure, but what can end up being a largely peaceful existence. Where would you want to live in Warhammer Fantasy? Don't go picking Ulth one. We'd all love to live there. Give me something exciting in the comments, and I'll see you next time, ghouls and gals.